Hi everyone. So this is the high power, high current uh, DC motor controller. This should handle at least 150 amps, no problem uh, with the proper heatsink. And I'll talk about how it can handle that much current. So let's start with the topmost part. We just have a switch here. Uh, and that when you turn it on and off uh, will give 24 volts and that goes to the other circuit where we can produce 5 volts and 12 volts and whatever you want. So we have the battery with the diode coming in through this 5 watt resistor and then that's going into the drain of these MOSFETs. And then you just have a tank of uh, capacitors. So this circuit is actually called a soft start. We kind of, you know, uh, give uh, kind of heat up, or you can say prep the MOSFETs. Then through this um, optocoupler, when you give it a signal, say five volts, it's gonna turn on this MOSFET that's gonna switch the relay, and then you can have, you know, the MOSFETs suck as much current as they want from the batteries when the motor is running. So uh, I'm just paralleling these MOSFETs for maximum current. Uh, and I mean, you can do that with MOSFETs. The more you put them in parallel, the more current you can uh, uh, draw actually. And, but I don't know if there's a limitation on it or not, but. So these zeners right here, uh, what they do is they'll clip the voltage to a 15 volts uh, because these MOSFETs, they have capacitance, gate capacitance, so we just want to prevent any spikes or anything that happens. Uh, and then this resistor just goes into the gate, uh, one for each MOSFET, and this is when we power it to Arduino, we just want to limit the current. It's only 120 ohms. This diode then right here, uh, it's a fast switching diode. When you turn off the MOSFET, you want to quickly drain the the uh, gate capacitance because if you know anything about power MOSFETs they build up this gate capacitance and you want to quickly get rid of it so what this diode does it that's it will just quickly draw that out and the same goes for this one and that uh, and then these uh, diodes right here these are called TVS transient uh, voltage suppressors so any spikes from the DC motor since the motors we're driving are pretty big 24 volt motor, so these uh, TVS stars will suppress any spikes. Now the driver that I'm using is a HIP chip. It's a HIP 4081A. Uh, it's, you can get for like, I think $6, you can get four chips from uh, uh, AliExpress. So that's what I'm doing. And instead of building honestly a driver uh, for these kind of high power, high current circuits, it's better just buy a ready-made chip. So this chip is pretty straightforward to set up. Uh, what you have is just these, uh, a diode here you set up and then these capacitors and they act like a boost uh, circuit. Um, here you have this LDEL and HDEL, which are the delay uh, resistors and they will delay the, when you switch between the high side one side and the other side to prevent shoot through. So that's a good smart thing in built into them. The, these are the input, uh, the uh, high side input, low side input. As you can see, pin number seven and two have been tied to 12 volts, which means the uh, BHO, the high side output and the AHO will always have 12 volts, which is coming here. So basically this top part and then this top part will always be on. And what we do is we flip this one or that one on and off. So when you turn on this one, current will flow this way. When you turn on this one, current will flow that way. So that's why we just have them always on and you only need, you only need two pins from your Arduino or whatever microcontroller to drive this uh, driver. And then uh, the others are just, uh, you know, uh, you have your VSS and then you have your VCC. Uh, that's already connected. And by the way, the motivation for this comes from this uh, open source motor control. So I took some of the idea from them. I will just like to give that a credit. Uh, what I also have done is some people remove their um, the brake from their DC motor. 
but what I'm doing is I'm just keeping that and instead just using an optocoupler and a MOSFET and I'll just drive them through my you know, Arduino. So I'll just have a, you know, you just give it a five volts. I will turn on the brakes, disengage the brakes or engage it. I'll show them when I build the circuit on a breadboard. We might use just a relay uh, just to simplify things up. And uh, the rest is just, uh, oh, I also have this other chip that I uh, ordered. And uh, this chip is actually, I'll talk about it later. It can be used to measure current. So this can measure up to 200 amps. So I'll, I'll just limit it to maybe 70 amps. So if I go more than that, I'll just shut, shut off the current to the uh, motors. It's a pretty simple setup. Uh, you have, um, uh, I think it's a user hall effect sensor. You just have current flowing through it and then you have a sense um, signal that goes to your uh, microcontroller. And I think for a certain current, it produces certain voltage and you can measure that. We'll build that on the breadboard some, some, some other video and measure current with it. It's good for protection. You might also want to put maybe, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a, um, a temperature monitoring kind of thing. So to monitor the temperature of these MOSFETs. And if that goes high, then maybe you can shut off, shut it off. So, you know, the more safety, the better. So now I'm just going to go ahead, uh, build this on a breadboard, and then I'll show you guys the demo. One thing I missed is that the MOSFETs I'm using are uh, are these 1405. Well, I'm using 1404, but they're kind of similar. So if you look at the data sheet, it says a drain current of 169 amps. But then there's this, uh, you know, um, footnote. So if you scroll down to the bottom and we look at number six, so you have to be very careful. You got to read these. It says package limitation current is 75 amps so that means you are only gonna get 75 amps out of it uh, so that's why when I was saying it can do 150 amps that means if we put two in parallel then I can double the current uh, and if you scroll down to uh, all these graphs there's one here right here and it says that the drain current is C at 75 amps for this package and it's at a temperature of, I think the maximum temperature you can go up to is 175 degrees. That's the case temperature. So when they say the case temperature, uh, there are two things, a case temperature and a junction temperature. So let me see if I can just find a MOSFET. So the case temperature is your, this metal part that's exposed outside. The junction temperature is inside the MOSFET right here. So I guess you can, if you go more than that temperature, you're just going to melt this thing. So I'll, I'll thought I'll bring this up. Uh, 